Welcome to a special series of our conversations on African philanthropy with me, Pieginko Smoyo, the director of the Center on African Philanthropy and Social Investment. We are shooting this special episode at the margins of the East Africa Philanthropy Network Conference in Zanzibar. For the next couple of episodes, you will be hearing from participants sharing on systems change and other forms of philanthropy. Enjoy the series. Capsi Podcast Series, Conversations on African Philanthropy. Welcome to yet another episode on our conversations on African philanthropy with me, Peginko Smoyo. I'm very excited today to be joined by Muendwa Catherine. Ordinarily, it should be Catherine Muendwa. <laughs> Welcome, Catherine. Thank you very much, Becky. Thank Such you. a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. I, I know we are here attending the main conference, which is the East Africa Philanthropy Network, but we are also taking the opportunity to speak mm -hmm. to participants. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you represent an institution that uh, has been doing some great work in the mm -hmm. continent. So maybe let's start by, you know, just understanding uh, what Giving Tuesday is, mm -hmm. how is it configured, uh, and how do people participate in the actions or activities of the organization? Okay, thank you for that. So first, <clears throat> I'll start by saying that Giving Tuesday is a movement um, in all forms. But Giving Tuesday, the name is, the, the Giving Tuesday is also the name of the institution that supports the movement. And Giving Tuesday is a shared moment uh, where people are encouraged to give back to their communities in the best way they know how and to causes that are close to their hearts. And so we work with leaders in over 90 countries around the world who are connected to constituencies, be it businesses, individuals, groups, and networks, including other movements. And the focus is to create and identify innovative ways that they can activate their communities to give back and to care for causes that they believe in. Yeah, and then in the African continent, how are you mm -hmm. structured? Uh, because I know that uh, there are certain uh, times when, you know, almost different countries have to partake mm -hmm. uh, in activities that are spearheaded by Giving Tuesday. But if somebody were sitting in Gambia or in Nigeria and they had Giving Tuesday, mm -hmm. how do they find you? How are you structured? Okay. So uh, as, as a global movement, of course, we are interconnected in how we support the movement and how we work. Uh, but um, the last one year, Giving Tuesday established the Africa Hub. And the Africa Hub is connected to country leaders uh, across 14 countries for now, uh, who coordinate and champion the Giving Tuesday movement at the country level. Um, and um, those who want to participate do not only connect with those specific country leaders, but connect with the global team and can connect with the hub. And there are um, opportunities and platforms where they can reach out to see the different ways they can engage, uh, the different ways they can participate. So we have uh, simple regeneratable tools that offer guidance on how individuals can engage um, on the day, be it businesses, be it individuals, be it groups. And that's basically the framework. So we, we, we currently work with um, 14 core leaders um, across the continent, and they are close and proximate and understand the situations within their own space. And so co-create some of these tools and um, ideas, but also engage their networks. And those leaders are representatives of the movement in their yeah. own country. So somebody hearing us talk about Giving Tuesday and they're asking the question, why Tuesday uh -huh. and, why, and not another day? Uh -huh. Can we talk about the etymology of the word or its mm -hmm. genesis? Uh -huh. Why Tuesday? Why Giving Tuesday? Okay, so uh, interesting, uh, Giving Tuesday was sparked uh, by um, a simple idea and the idea was really uh, founded on how to respond um, around uh, the spirit of Black Friday and Cyber Monday, which is uh, largely um, focused on sales and consumerism. And uh, the idea was how can we leverage that same global momentum uh, to inspire people to give back to. Yeah. 
So hence Giving Tuesday. So it's it's um, celebrated every year after Cyber Monday. So yeah. that's the essence. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but then within a sh very short framework, a very short time, um, the movement grew and oh, in in different countries and has evolved uh, to mean different things for different yeah. people. Yeah. But we are all connected by a shared value of generosity and humanity, by just the spirit of impatience yeah, when it comes yeah. to the change we want to yeah. pursue. Yeah. So one would think that Giving Tuesday is only about giving, but mm -hmm. the little that I know about you, mm -hmm. you actually do more than that. You do research and, um, and obviously research would have to lead to either advocacy or policy uh, influence. Maybe, maybe take us through some of the activities uh, that you do that kind of become enabling factors mm -hmm. for this giving to actually take place. Okay. Yeah, so uh, Giving Tuesday is, of course, not just about giving. And even deeper than that, uh, we look at giving in different ways. So it's not just transactional or yeah. giving in terms of yeah. financial giving. Uh, we also uh, value what voice contributes to. So we also encourage and um, enable and inspire people to give voice to the causes that they believe in um, to address more structural issues uh, but we also work with volunteer networks and engage um, groups and even professional associations and the rest to identify creative ways that they can give time uh, to the to the causes and the issues that they care about but beyond that having grown so much um, it's only natural for us to think about learning um, one um, timely learning on what is the effect of Giving yeah. Tuesday, for example, and beyond that, what can we learn from the interactions that are happening across the, the globe? And hence, um, our data initiative, which you are quite familiar with, that is uh, Data Commons. So it came about <clears throat> uh, to try and um, help us understand what is happening on Giving Tuesday, what the effect is, how much is being given, and how are people interacting beyond just giving, yeah. what conversations are happening, um, what uh, giving is happening beyond transactional and financial giving. And of course, um, the, the results of that was drawn interest from other stakeholders uh, to understand broadly um, the generosity environment, right? Um, and leverage that those data insights yeah. to uh, support and inform um, generosity campaigns, but also this, the sector broadly. Uh, so for that, uh, last year we launched the Data Capital Campaign, uh, which is a collaborative of uh, giving platforms, academia, but also nonprofits and other stakeholders who are interested um, in this space to co-create um, research um, and also uh, respond or answer some of the questions that still linger in the sector, but also uh, see how some of those data insights can be applied um, across yeah. the civil society. Yeah. 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 And then obviously one would want to know, um, where do you find most attraction or resonance mm -hmm. in terms of the concept if you looked at different countries in the mm -hmm. continent or even globally? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think Giving Tuesday is uh, big um, in its epicenter, and, yeah. and, and that's uh, the U.S. But as you well know, um, the, the U.S. is such a diverse society that yeah. attracts so yeah. many people yeah. from across um, the world. And that's why uh, that concept has really resonated across communities. And I'll give you an example of an interesting trend that we're seeing within our movement is... Um, the, the idea that coming together to mobilize goodwill um, from our communities has a very um, strong, uh, resonates strongly yeah. uh, with uh, the people that uh, we want to engage. And a typical example will be, uh, we have coalition campaigns, for example, um, Latinx uh, that uh, brings together uh, 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 communities uh, from um, uh, uh, communities outside of uh, the U.S. We have Muslim Gives, uh, which is um, a campaign that's connecting with um, a platform to encourage Muslim giving amongst the Muslim communities. So, as much as um, there's a strong 
resonance of the movement in the US. Um, there is a lot of diversity in terms yeah. of how that is, is represented. And um, <clears throat> in addition to that, uh, one thing that uh, Giving Tuesday has injected in, in the sector for sure and having worked with uh, this space for a while is just how the message resonates with different people. Yeah. I mean, everyone can give and there are tools and resources and networks that can help you connect to that form yeah. of giving. Yeah. And this has really um, allowed and uh, ha ha this has allowed individuals to see themselves as philanthropists yeah. um, in this ecosystem. And uh, one of the things that the Africa Hub is really keen to do is, of course, connect with institutions like yourselves, um, networks to identify ways we can enhance that space and um, open up that space to have more um, inclusive engagements with individuals and even non-traditional yeah. um, philanthropic actors like yeah. the alumni communities, for example, uh, the professional associations, um, and even uh, community level or uh, mutual aid groups in yeah. our communities. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm trying to make sense of the movement part. So mm -hmm. as a movement, it's possible mm -hmm. that some things might be happening under the Giving Tuesday um, framework and you you are not in a position to to actually track mm -hmm. uh, because I mean if if, if 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 I get the concept giving Tuesday and, mm -hmm. and we decide maybe as an institution or a community that we are going to use Tuesday mm -hmm. for for such mm -hmm. whether you track it or you don't mm -hmm. the movement continues right yes so is that is that how it is right now that you are you are, you, are, you have you have you have ignited this movement mm -hmm. but you may never know the extent to which it has been absorbed by communities? I guess at, at, at times we come across campaigns we yeah. never knew existed. And, and I think that's the true test to yeah. our movement. And yeah. I, I'll just refer to Henry Timms, who is the founder of, uh, co-founder of Giving Tuesday. Uh, it's never a movement until it moves without you. Yeah, yeah. And we've seen yeah. that um, truly resonate with um, how Giving Tuesday is. But we are doing our best and we have done our best yeah. to truly track, track yeah. uh, Giving Tuesday engagements across yeah. Um, yeah. the world. One thing I forgot to mention that binds our conversations on Giving Tuesday and any other day, really, is that we have um, the opportunity to track hashtag engagement. So at least for those yeah. engaging yeah. on Giving yeah. Tuesday or under Giving Tuesday and using the hashtag, it has become easier yeah. for us to... Yeah to track the conversations, but also engagement yeah. um, alongside yeah. that. So right now, I mean, if somebody said, this is a beautiful concept, however, how do we ascertain that it's, it's got potential to be a driver of development? Because mm -hmm. obviously, given where we are as a continent, there's no doubt that giving or philanthropy is a force that we should be tapping into for developmental purposes. Mm -hmm. Are you working closely with, let's say, policymakers in order to make this part of the thinking when it comes to developing tools for development? Uh, yes, um, and, and, and one, of course, is just the value we've placed in um, having open source yeah. data, yeah. right? A data that can be used by policymakers too to inform decisions. So that has been quite strategic from for, for the movement leadership. And the second one is prioritizing yeah, collaborations, yeah, yeah. Um, collaborations with yourself, collaborations with networks that yeah, have yeah. Uh, more intimate and proximate engagement with policymakers at, at the national level. And as you um, understand, especially for the African context, a lot of that, the policy making, especially for philanthropy, is largely national. Yeah. So ensuring that we are working with partners at that level to support um, in, in, in their engagements with um, with, with governments, but also their um, connections and understanding yeah. in terms of uh, research when it comes to generosity. Yeah. Then in financial terms, I mean, I don't know if you've got the figures, but if one said annually, mm -hmm. uh, those that you have tracked, how much do you do you mobilize? Okay. Um, I, 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 in, in terms of uh, financial mobilization, uh, we've mobilized over $2 billion dollars in 2022 alone and yeah. um, there are reports uh, we have an impact report that detail that and as, as, as I said it's not just about um, uh, financial uh, resources 
and I view what um, results we announce or uh, the, the, the financial resources contributed or yeah. counted as an outcome of so many engagements yeah. that happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, we, we have done a lot to track stories, to track conversations, to understand how uh, people are interacting with uh, generosity, but also what matters uh, to them, what conversations matter to them, yeah. what um, mm -hmm. areas um, they are interested in. And so we've done a lot of social listening to, to track some of that. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, I, I know that um, platforms like this one, the East Africa Philanthropy Network, uh, the Africa Philanthropy Forum, the Africa Philanthropy Networks are spaces where you also participate mm -hmm. actively. Uh, what is it that you, you benefit from platforms like this and how do platforms like this benefit from you? Um, I think one is to first of all acknowledge that the East Africa Philanthropy Network is uh, the Giving Tuesday leader for okay. the region. Yeah. Uh, so by, by that means uh, we work very closely with them to yeah. um, ensure that we are supportive in that sense. Uh, but platforms like this offer us an opportunity to understand the sector, yeah. right? We had a yeah. conversation earlier today about um, systems change and, and, and where we should walk the talk. Yeah. And this is only possible if we understand where we position ourselves within the larger ecosystem. And this um, engagement really help us truly understand the vision uh, for, for, for the continent that has been created by those who came before us. Yeah. So that's um, a great one. And then the other one in terms of platforms is that we are very um, collaborative in our approach. Um, and there is no better space to truly understand how to, to do this and how to engage than yeah. where other people yeah. are. Yeah. yeah. If I were to ask you as an active participant in these spaces, but also broadly in the debates and, um, and conversations on philanthropy and, and asked from your perspective, what is the state of philanthropy right now mm -hmm. in Africa and in East Africa in particular? Mm -hmm. um, I think I, having uh, engaged uh, in the philanthropy sector and more institutionalized yeah. uh, giving frameworks, there is a lot of change that is happening. And, uh, and, and we are seeing opportunities um, to unlock uh, communities of giving um, in a more structured way uh, than we did before and opportunities to unlock data and information that can, can help us um, provide and support um, the, the ecosystem much better. So in terms of um, the state of giving, I know it has been challenging two or three years. Yeah. Uh, and of course, that has really had an impact uh, in, in how people give, when and, and, and where. But it offers us an opportunity, it has offered us an opportunity to truly appreciate yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. peer to peer giving and, uh, and, and appreciate the fact that there are limits to what we know about yeah. generosity yeah. in the continent. Yeah. And so the, the, we are in a state of, um, I could call it curiosity right now yeah. in a big way, yeah. but also um, the fact that we are curious for our purpose and the purpose yeah. is to learn and direct yeah. much better. And so what is the next frontier for Giving Tuesday, especially in Africa? Yeah, um, I think one is to collaborate with other partners um, and be more of a complementary uh, or a catalyst uh, partner in one, um, understanding giving trends, uh, giving behaviors in a way that is um, relevant to, uh, to develop data sets and information that is relevant for the rest of the sector. So that's really big. But then the other thing is to connect with other movements, to support movement leaders, especially non-traditional movement leaders who are doing amazing work yeah. across the continent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then of course I know you, we, we have to let you go so mm -hmm. that you can attend your other meetings. Mm -hmm. But finally, uh, what is it that keeps you um, awake? Basically, what is it that still needs to be done, uh, and how, what has influenced you to be where you are today? A lot, but one thing is, I am very passionate about um, youth, um, yeah. and specifically young vulnerable youth um, for personal reasons because I've um, had a, an experience with injustice 
And I realized that sometimes there are so many opportunities to unlock support for young people. Yeah. Um, and we have solutions um, around us, but sometimes it will take a lot to one understand what the solutions are. It will take a lot for us to unlock some of those opportunities. And so creating space for young people to, um, to, to interact and also present themselves as leaders who are leading other young people is something that yeah. really influences everything I do every day. Yeah. 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 So, Catherine, thank you so much. I know we, mm -hmm. we tried to squeeze in this interview mm -hmm. uh, and this was done in a space where you are busy with other things happening around you. But thank you for making the time. I'm hoping that at some point we'll have enough time mm -hmm. to, to, to reconnect again. And, and by then, maybe you'd have made even more progress. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for making the time. Okay. Thank you so much, Becky. That was Catherine from Giving Tuesday. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. You've been listening to the Capsi podcast series, Conversations on African Philanthropy.